With gas metal arc welding, there's a lot happening down at the arc. I'm going to break it all down for you. Hey, welcome to the shop. So a fundamental understanding of how the arc works and what's going on down there is going to make it much easier for you to get your settings dialed in and get a good weld. Now, what actually happens there depends on a number of factors, the type of machine you're using, what your shielding gas is, where your settings are at. First of all, let's look at the one that is used by 90% of people. If you're MIG welding, you're probably welding in this way. What that is, is the short circuit transfer mode. In other parts of the world, it's called the dip transfer mode. Now what's happening here is your arc isn't going all the time. The arc actually goes out over and over again and that is why you get that crackling or frying bacon sound. The wire feeds in, touches your material and then it burns back like a fuse blowing. When that happens, it starts an arc. That's where the electricity is bridging a gap there and it produces a tremendous amount of heat. Well, as this is happening, that arc is actually melting the wire and it's melting the wire faster than the wire is coming out of the gun. So the arc gets longer and longer and longer until there isn't enough voltage left to keep that arc going and it goes out. The wire is still feeding out. It'll go down and touch your material and repeat that process over and over again, many times per second. Now you might be scratching your head wondering why would we do that whole song and dance? You know, when you're stick welding or when you're TIG welding, the arc is going all the time. Time, why would we want to have this short circuit transfer mode? Well, the reality is in MIG welding, there is another version where you keep the arc going all the time. We'll talk about it in a minute. But the reason why you'd want to use this short circuit transfer mode to have the arc only lit part of the time is because it helps to regulate the amount of heat that you're putting in or the rate that heat is going into your material because that arc isn't always on. And this lets you do things like weld thinner material. It lets you do things like weld in the vertical and overhead position and also makes it possible for lower amperage machines like your 110 volt machines to be able to work. Well, let's shift gears here and talk about the spray transfer mode. And that's where your arc is lit all the time. Now, in order to run this, you need to have a machine that can output sufficient current and voltage. And you also need to change your gas from a 25% CO2 down to like a 10% CO2 gas to run spray transfer. Or sometimes you'll actually run almost straight argon with just a percent or two of oxygen in it. With spray transfer mode, you're keeping your arc lit all the time and the length of that arc actually depends on your voltage setting. Turn up your voltage, you get a longer arc and then your cone will spray out further off of there with the metal coming off of your wire in really fine droplets. Welding with spray transfer has some real advantages. First of all, you can put down a lot of material in a hurry with spray transfer. Second, when you're welding on thicker material, it actually gives you better penetration and can help avoid things like lack of fusion defects. And because that arc is going all the time, you get much less spatter and you know much less of an erratic arc coming off of there and it lays in nice and smooth. However, like we talked about before, it's just dumping a ton of heat in non-stop and so you can't do things like weld vertically or overhead or in other positions and you can't really use it on thinner material. In between short circuit transfer and spray transfer, there is kind of a middle ground called globular transfer where your metal will come off in larger droplets. It's less commonly the target of what you're trying to get to, though it does have some uses. Well, you might be wondering, here we are in 2022, isn't there some version that gives you the best of both worlds? There is, but you need a pretty fancy machine to do it. What you have here is pulsed spray transfer or pulsed MIG. Now what's happening with pulsed MIG is rather than relying on the physics of that short circuit transfer mode to turn your weld on and off and on and off, you're using electronics or computer to turn the voltage and current up and down and up and down. And when you do that, you're able to regulate that heat while still keeping the arc lit all the time. This gives you the better penetration and the smoother arc that you'd have with a spray transfer and eliminates a lot of the spatter that you'd get. And it also regulates your heat input, allowing you to weld out of position or on thinner materials. With all these variations of the process, 
there are a few things in common. One is that you're using a constant voltage power supply. Now this is different from the power supply that you'd use for stick welding or TIG welding, which are called constant current supplies, and they try to maintain the same amperage. That's why you'd set amps when you're stick welding or TIG welding, and here with MIG welding, we're setting volts. Now you use a constant voltage power supply because your voltage really regulates the length of your arc. So when you go to a higher voltage, you're gonna get a longer arc, a lower voltage will give you a shorter one. Now because the machine is trying to maintain the same voltage, and it doesn't maintain the exact same voltage, but uh, you know that's the goal is for this machine to maintain the same voltage. When you increase your wire feed speed and you're dumping wire in there faster, it has to automatically increase your welding current or amperage to be able to keep the same voltage going. But that's why increasing your wire feed speed is gonna increase the amount of heat you get in your part because it increases the amperage or current that goes into your part. So that's why you'll see on your charts when you go to thicker material, you go to a higher wire feed speed because it gives you more current. And you need to change your voltage as well to be able to maintain the ratio of wire feed speed and voltage to control your actual amperage. So if you want to know more about the details of setting your machine and getting that all dialed in, I have a video all about that you can check out here. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you next time.